We are finally alone. You and I. Finally, I've been alone with you and owned you, and owned your eyes, every time you look at my words and read my lines. This will be the last novel you'll read in your life, because I am on the brink of a pit from death. I have nothing left in this life but some hours. I don't know how many, but I know that they are few. Despite that, they are sufficient to provide you with whatever I want to provide you. Before I start, I must tell you, you must read this book and burn it, because they will try to destroy it and everyone who read it, as they did with the books that were similar to it. Do not panic. Just remember my words well, and if they killed you after I taught you these words, you will die satisfied, and who dreams of dying satisfied in this world of yours? Do not panic, my friend. Who am I? Where? Why? How? All of them are questions that I know you are asking, and you may want to throw away this book now and continue your life, but I assure you, there is no difference for them between those who read it and those who threw it in the nearest garbage. They destroy everyone. But the readers might have a chance to escape. Do not look at me like this. Even though I am the writer, despite that I am eventually dead, and they will storm my room shortly afterwards and wipe me out from the face of the earth as if I have never been there. Let's not waste time in the explanation and foolish talks, and let me start with you right away. We have no time to waste, you and I, and you will know in my speech things, and you will deny more things. You will like things about it and you will hate more things. But let me tell you one important thing. I will never lie to you. I will only tell you the truth that no one told you before me. I will teach you secrets that those like you should not have known. And if I lied to you, they would not kill me. Instead, they would reward me and celebrate me as they do with everyone who lies. I know that you are a bored person. Either you are not a fan of reading, or you are but you do not pay any attention to books that are not adorned with the names of great writers. Therefore, and in order to make you read my book completely as you should read it, I created a game for you that you and I will play. No one will participate with us. The game of cards, not the ordinary cards. Rather, they are cards of another type, a damned and cursed type of cards. And the most important thing in it is the arrangement. If it is arranged according to something other than what its maker wants it to be, it would be worthless. As for, if the correct order is established, it will open doors of secrets for you that no one told you, and no one will ever tell you. Dangerous secrets, kills everyone who knows them, and burns everyone who learns and teaches them. I will put thirteen group of cards in front of you. Each group of them tells a story, and tells secrets they want to hide from those like you, and they will follow you because you knew them, and because you are a bored person and I appreciate that. Each of those 13 stories will be presented to you in a way that differs from the previous one. Have you seen how I am keen to draw your attention? And this is only because what is left for me in life is very little, and I would not waste a single moment of it just because of your bored mind. But you can, because I will babble a little much, although it is very important babble. But do not be distracted and concentrate in this space only, and most importantly, do not panic. The more steps further you and I go in the game, I will tell you more about myself, and where I came from, and how I got to you, and who are the ones who will kill and burn you after they kill me and burn me, and how do you save yourself from them. But for now, I will only tell you my name. I am Bobby Frank. I see you inferred from my name that I am an American. That is true. Finally, before we begin, I want to alert you to an important matter. Do not think that you can read this book one time in a clean session in your favorite place. You must read this book 13 times so that you can absorb it well. Now let's start our game. Its name I will not tell you until I wish to. It is enough for you now to know that it is a card game, a paper sheets card game. Now sit in front of me calmly and look at the first set of cards that I will place for you in order on the table. I know the dimmer that I use in my room causes headache, but don't mind, please. It is necessary. Now let's begin. I have placed in front of you six papers upside down, and I will reveal them to you one by one, in the correct order required. The arrangement that will tell the first story, and reveals the first secret. The first sheet of paper with an image of a cursed devil with two horns, and it appears in its most angry state. The second paper is the paper of magic. The magic of the earth, 
and it has an image of light emanating from the underground of the earth, surrounded by several rocks around it. And the third is the sheet of magic of air. A charming man casts a spell in the air. The fourth sheet is the card of absolute power, and on it is the image of a strong man's fist wearing a large gold ring. The fifth sheet has images of idols and looks as if someone smashed it. The sixth and last card is the hammer card. On it is the image of a strong man, a blacksmith holding a great hammer and waving it in a mule. Even if you forget these pictures and papers now, they will flash in your memory clearly as I narrate the first story and the first secret. I will sing this song to God when the great Savior comes and this innocent, beautiful, anxious girl. And when the great Savior comes, you will surely be free. An old Babylonian song with the voice of an old man and an old Babylonian language that he used to sing and move his head slowly. His voice was soft and beautiful, but the music in the background was not compatible with the beauty of his voice. He was singing to the sound of sheep roaming in the pasture, sheep roaming with his stick on them from time to time. He was happy, and who wouldn't be happy while walking in such a charming nature? We are in the ancient kingdom of Assyria, near the city of Babylon, the greatest city that men and jinn has ever seen in history, and this shepherd with a melodious voice is the old man, Ishma. More than 4,000 years ago, the earth was other than the earth, and the sky was not the sky. Ishma could look at the pond he was walking next to and recognize all its fish and shells as if he was looking at birds in the sky. More than 4,000 years ago, everything was pure and completely pure. And it seems that the old man Ishma had decided to rest for a while. So he went to a nearby tree where he used to leave his food. And when he reached his food, he looked at it in amazement. It was open. These poor thieves would never learn. If they asked him for food, he would give them but they prefer stealing. Their souls refuses to ask people, but accepts to steal them. But Ishma was very surprised when he looked at the food, even though the bag was open, but the food is present, the cheese is eaten from it in a very small way, and the milk is a little deficient. Ishma sat and ate and drank and rested in the shade of the tree. Then he decided to go in the pond, and as the shepherds who bathed in ponds in all ancient kingdoms did, he took off all his clothes and went down to the water. And while the old Ishma was bathing, he was looking at his belongings from time to time, subconscious looks, and suddenly a flock of beautiful-looking pigeons came and landed at his food. And the pigeons pecked the cheese with small clicks and filled their little beaks with milk in a strange scene. Then they flew and landed, not far away. And they stay there for a few minutes and then fly back to his food. Ishma came out of the pond and wore his old Babylonian clothes, but he did not go to his belongings. Rather, he went to that place where doves fly with this strange enthusiasm, and there he found something his old eyes widened in amazement. He found a beautiful child, a nine-year-old girl. His eyes could not see as beautiful as she was, but this is not what surprised him. His eyes expanded once again because the doves surrounded her, fed her, and watered her from their beaks with milk. The little girl was laughing in enjoyment. When Ishma approached her, he could not find an explanation for the scene. Ishma looked at her beautiful little eyes. It was the first time he saw a child with these wonderful eyelashes. Ishma decided to take this child with him and to raise her by himself, and he also decided to give her a name. He called her by the Beloved of the Doves, the name that when speaking in ancient Babylonian pronounced as Semiramis. It is the great celebration in Babylon, and when Babylon celebrates, it adds a thousand beauty and delight to your eyes. When the green mountains, plains, and clear rivers meet the white and blue marble characteristic of Babylonian palaces and the large drawings covering the walls, and when the people who celebrate in their most elegant dress and edifices in history, then you know that there is a very important event passes by them. You must know that there is a newborn child of King Cush and Queen Udag, a male baby. These ceremonies would not take place if the newborn was female. As you approach, you will hear many words on the pattern like, how wonderful his eyes are, or he is the most wonderful child my eyes have ever seen. This motivates you more to look at the child. Here he is in front of you. 
Beauty is embodied in a small head and sharp eyes. But there is a problem that interrupted you. Just as this child is surrounded by peoples and folks of all over the kingdom, you see other things surrounding him too. They were demons. Yes, demons. They were smiling with satanic smiles that all the devils were good at, and they were reciting something, something evil. Suddenly everyone fell silent, and the great sheikh spoke, or Mohail as they called him in Babylon. The sheikh said, Today I am honored and humanity is honored, and the whole earth is honored by the birth of the eldest son who will bear the name of the great king Cush, the great son whom the family decided to name Zahak. Here the crowd buzzed with cries of happiness, but the name Zahak did not have a favorable meaning anyway. The name in the Babylonian language meant the stinging snake, and on the mention of stinging snakes, the laughter of demons was among them too. Happy satanic laughters all over the palace. The old shepherd Ishma was looking at that feminine masterpiece that seemed to have descended from heaven to him alone. The little masterpiece that he gave her the name Semiramis. He is just a poor shepherd who gets hungry day by day. The place of this little jewel is definitely not between those walls, the dilapidated one in which he lives. God must spare for her beauty a more elegant place. And here his old brain surprised him with a great idea. Tomorrow, the great Nineveh market will be held, which coincides with the wedding season that takes place every year in Babylon where young men and women gather from all over the great kingdom of Assyria, and every young man chooses their suitable bride. The adults buy young girls to raise them until they reach the age of marriage, and marry them or present them to one of their sons as wives. He looked into the beautiful eyes of Semiramis, and decided to go tomorrow to Nineveh market. The old Ishma went carrying the little Semiramis on his shoulder to Nineveh. Ishma had dressed his best, but he seemed to be like a simpleton, of course, in this market in which every beauty competes. Semiramis was laughing with her charming laugher.